Let me tell you somebody, though, that, that we don't hate around here, mm -hmm. uh, certainly. Panay Sewell yes, sir. Uh, was called to the podium, gave his press conference regarding his contract extension, I guess you could call it, that, uh, that he locked up that made him the highest paid offensive lineman in NFL history. And uh, we were all able to hear from Panay Sewell. What do you have to say? About the Super Bowl. Do that just to win, bro. Like, it's nothing else to it. Like, all those uh, individual accolades don't mean nothing. Like, I want the big boy, and I want it now. So, pretty simple. D Mac, quote, I want the big boy, and I want it now. And he ain't talking the gold jacket you already got. Yeah, that's it. That's well, already got. No, individual stats. And that's, you believe him a million percent. That's what you want. That's why you pay a guy that much money. I mean, you couldn't be in a better position. I love the fact of what he talked about from culture and about being seen to the fact he mentioned, you know, Brad Holmes gave him the lay, which, you know, he sees him and stuff like that. To me, that's what it's all about, right? And it goes back to the excitement. I've seen a clip when Brad Holmes drafted him. So, again, <laughs> here we go. This is just part of it moving along. And if you don't think that that guy is not one of your leaders in this team and he's going to drag the guys like that can drag rest of the guys into the war with them and guys 100%. will go guys who aren't comfortable going in the war, not saying that, but, but maybe it's their first time or something like that. The younger guys, you have all the confidence in having a guy like Penny Sewell around because of what he's all about. D Mac, you've heard me say this before. And mark me on this, all right? You, you tell me where this kind of fits. But as I said, Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell, did they change things here? Absolutely. Certainly. I'm on Russ St. Brown. Absolutely. Certainly. But DMAC, the moment I knew that this was different was when they were playing the Rams, Sewell's rookie year. Actually, the 49ers game, mm -hmm. when he got up in Nick Bosa's grill, and then a couple weeks, and then handled them. You know what I'm saying? Like, it wasn't yeah. just talk. It wasn't just somebody coming in here. You know, the Lions always had those guys that would come in here and talk, but then not do anything. He was about business. He talked to Bosa about it. He put Bosa in a phone booth. Fast forward a couple weeks later, they're playing the Rams. Aaron Donald's talking junk. Not to Sewell, you're not. That was the day that it changed here. And Panay Sewell is the man that changed That's it. When you... I, know, I know there's ancillary stuff to it and all yeah. that kind of stuff, but I'm talking about, to me, to me as a fan, the day he stood up to the best in the league time after time after time and not just talked about it, beat about it. Mm -hmm. that, that's when it was all different, DMAC. That's when I got the vibe that said, all right, we can ride with this. Now, they were in a situation where, you know, you had Jelani Tavai and Trey Flowers and Jamie Collins on the books for $20 million to not be there. Like, that was that season. So certainly that season was, you know, your foundation season. But his actions and his words... He was about action. He was about his words. All of it. What he did. Panay Sewell's the one that changed all this, DMAC. I'll, I'll stand on that forever. And, and here's the thing. Here's my question to that statement. Who is the player, the number one player that best exemplifies their coach? Because don't we say that teams take the characteristics of their coach? Good teams do. Is Panay Sewell not... Dan Campbell, if Dan Campbell was a player at that position to whatever, meaning that when you have, and especially here's where it changed, Neil, to making your point in his rookie year, right? Drafted, change. To me, Penny Sewell is the, is the cornerstone to, uh, Brad, uh, to Brad Holmes and Dan Campbell. It's, it's the Trinity. Uh, you're always looking for the, the Trinity. That's he is the stalwart piece to their puzzle, bringing it in their guy and stuff like this. Just go back to the draft, go watch when they drafted him and they got him. That's when it changed. Now, to your point, words are something, expectations are another thing, but then putting it on tape action. and action doing it, telling you once, showing you twice, and from that moment, consistency to that point. Right to that point that every day goes out there. I watched the highlight of, uh, remember when he came out of, the, out of the backfield, caught the pass, you know, got the first down and fell down. The DB for Minnesota tried to grab the ball after the whistle, and he took a swipe at him, yeah. bro. Mm -hmm. Like, when he's, he's in... He's not about the game. Listen, when he's between those lines, 
for lack of a better term, that's his dojo. That's his rink. That is his. He's not there playing with you. He, no, dude. He's a lion. Like, no, I mean, no pun intended, but he is Mufasa out there. Woodward Sports uh, chat as well. Uh, Detroit Supremacy. Uh, we should have drafted Parsons and traded up for Darisaw. We'd be champs by Come now. Come on with that. Come Shut on up. With that. All right. Spenny, you're my resident on this because you, you stood on business with this before. Mm -hmm. Parsons Sewell, straight up. Phone yeah. booths. Bread box. Bread box. Door closed? Door closed. The little ribbed wood that slides down? Oh, yeah. With a handle on it? Mm hmm <laughs> There's no discussion, bro. Yeah. That's what I'm taught. That's why he's different. We got, we got Sewell and Hutch. I'm good with that. Yeah. I'll ride with my guys. 100%, man. And so will the Lions organization. Because Sewell's already the highest paid offensive lineman in the history of the, foot of, of the game. And justifiably so. Because I told the Hall of Fame committee this two years ago. I was out in front of all this inflation talk. I said, Bill, you know, start getting the materials for his gold jacket now. Stay in front of inflation. Uh, did they listen? I don't know. But perhaps they should have. Because I could have saved him a couple bucks. He's going to Canton. He's a Hall of Famer. He will be a Super Bowl champ. Look, look at his face when he talks. You, yeah. think, you think he's playing with you? He's not. Hey, address this too, because Wheezy, this is, but it didn't change, Neil saying, until they added. Because yes, Decker and Ragnow deserve some flowers for helping, but to get over the edge and what made the difference was adding Penny Sewell to them. Yeah. Not saying that other guys don't deserve it and aren't part of it, like you mentioned, the Jamie Collins and the guys who got it going, but this was the difference. Adding him to those guys really solidified what do we talk about? What's mm -hmm. your greatest asset? Your offensive line. So that's yeah. what it is. Yes, they deserved it, but they couldn't pull it over the edge. They needed this extra piece, and it, they were there before. But when they added Sewell, and that's usually the way it is. That's what great teams do. Absolutely, man. Sewell is this, D-Mac, and you and I have this discussion often. Sewell is the fetter off to the Red Wing. Like that undeniable mm -hmm. talent. Undeni that abnormal talent. Somebody that's just built differently. Yeah. See, is he fed the off? The no, no, styles no. are see, different, I, I, but the I'm, talent's I, I, the same. Okay, see, I'm gonna, I'm gonna challenge you on that and say he's your, he's Nick your Lidstrom. Lidstrom. He's your Lidstrom. He's every right. Whether it's like, no, uh, Jokic. He's the Lidstrom, right? Whether Embiid and other guys win his trophy or not, just the, the but material what, just talent, the, right? And and then if you style of play different, but the mercurial talent of what you have gold jacket to to the epitome. Now, it's different because Penny Sewell, you're going to know he's there, right? To that point where Nick Lidstrom, it's sort of, it was it was the way that he did it. But the consistency and what they mean to the organization, yes. And I'm only saying that because I would say that that's where you're, you're like, you know, you're, what's your, your Amar Ross St. Brown is more of your Federoff. Fair. But he's, but he's a combo of Eiserman and Federoff. Yes. Right? Yeah. And that's and that's what it like the I mercurial like the talent. talent. Mercurial, like like when when you say Nick Lidstrom, like what do you think? Like, oh okay, either one or two greatest defensemen all time behind Bobby Orr, depending on how old you are, right? I mean, it's just it's non negotiable. You go three, go three if you want to stick it in there. But so when you're talking about Penny Sewell, one of the best at his position in the game, and he hasn't even played his natural position. How old is he? Is he like twenty three or something? Yeah. Yeah. Like, come on, bro. Like in three years we're already saying he's a Hall of Famer. And then I also think you can't put a price tag on, yes, the talent is there, but he's also become the heart and soul of your th team. That's like, what's up, man. He's, he's, he's the coach, one leading man. these guys. When they when they break down the huddles before the game, who's in the center of that? Mm -hmm. The twenty three year old. Exactly. And who's got every eyeball? undivided attention. Who's got the undivided attention of one of the best receivers in the game? Panay Sewell does. He does. That And that matters, man. Yeah. 100% that. He's three years away from being 26. It's crazy. It is. It is. It's absurd, man. The, the whole the whole thing. He's absurd. And, and I'm telling you this, D-Mac. He'll never get the credit because he's an offensive lineman. Mm -hmm. But I've been in a lot of locker rooms. Obviously, you've been in a lot of locker rooms. And I kind of learned this from you, from talking to you. You don't, that doesn't translate in a camera, in a snapshot, in a play 
on a Sunday. No. You know that's there, though. No, you can and, – and go watch the after, you know, the victory celebrations and stuff like that. You just see it, and you can feel – like, it, like you feel his presence wherever he is, right? That's yeah. – you just – people don't have that. that. That is a gift, and he's got that gift. And especially, like you said, because he's wise beyond his years. But to me, he – most epitomizes your coach yeah right and the, the way that he played yeah